So we're very pleased today to have Dr. Tatiana Podlachikova. She is an assistant professor at the Space Center at Skolkovo Institute of Science and Technology in Moscow, which is also known as Skoltech. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you very much for inviting me. Of course, on Earth, we uh, talk about the weather all the time. It's the most kind of banal subject that unifies so many people. But Weather happens in space as well. So I wanted to just start by asking, what is space weather? The weather we are accustomed to, like rain, snow, floods, uh, forest fires, avalanches, earthquakes, and volcanoes can, of course, cause us very big trouble. But our amazing nature also has space weather. And uh, the source of space weather is our sun. And the sun produces big solar flares powerful coronal mass ejections, geomagnetic storms, and auroras. In our history, when have these uh, these kind of big space weather events had the most impact? One uh, of the strongest and very famous space weather events uh, occurred in 1859, in the 18th century, when the induced uh, geomagnetic storm collapsed the whole telegraph system in North America and Europe. And in those uh, days, it was the main means of communication for business and personal contacts, not only main, the only one basically. And if such an event occurs today, then uh, modern devices are in no way protected. Uh, we may find ourselves without electricity, television, um, internet, radio communication. The damage from uh, such an extreme event could cost uh, up to several trillion dollars in the restoration of infra infrastructure and the economy could take up to 10 years. Imagine this situation. You wake up in the morning. It's middle of March, for instance. It's cold outside. And uh, you realize that your central heating isn't working. You go to the kitchen for a cup of coffee, but realize that kettle uh, coffee machine is not working either. Nor is refrigerator, any of the lights or the internet. Outside, it's the same story. The traffic lights aren't working, factories are not working, and the same with airports, schools, transportation. Everything that supports our modern civilization has simply ground to halt. This basic, this sounds like the beginning of an apocalyptic scenario, right? But this actually happened in Canada back in 1989. And um, a very powerful geomagnetic storm uh, collapsed an entire power grid and caused a mass blackout. And around 6 million people were left without electricity for a whole night. And the cost of that uh, particular geomagnetic storm was something in the range of uh, $300 million. Um, our sun uh, is a huge glowing bubble of hot gas, resembling a boiling kettle, actually. Every single second, sun fuses 600 million tons of hydrogen into helium. And during this uh, reaction, the sun converts 4 million tons of matter into energy, yeah, according to famous Einstein formula. This energy gives us light, heat, and creates a very great environment for life on Earth. But at the same time, the sun is a source of powerful eruptions that uh, create strong disturbances on Earth. And uh, we study the mood of the sun, how it spreads to the Earth, and how to protect our society and uh, technologies in space. One of my favorite type of space imagery is just those incredible explosions that erupt out of the sun. They are so dramatic. What causes that? Why is our sun blowing up in that, in that very kind of intimidating way? Moving charged particles in the core of the sun uh, create a very powerful magnetic field. And solar magnetic field stores enormous amount of energy. It rises up and creates sunspots, dark areas on the solar surface. And uh, sunspot can be much larger than our Earth itself. Solar flare is a sudden release of energy in the solar atmosphere, this burst of electromagnetic radiation. And during a solar flare, enormous energy is released. It is equivalent to the explosion of tens of millions of hydrogen bombs. If our Earth did not have an atmosphere, hard X-rays would kill us. But we are lucky uh, because uh, there is a dense Earth atmosphere which absorbs radiation from the solar flare and basically protects us. So it really does seem like these storms have the potential to cause a lot of havoc on the ground, in the air, in space, basically every realm. 
What can we do to better predict them? So first, uh, um, today, uh, many ground and space-based observatories and stations observe the sun and interplanetary space. And these observations, of course, are used for space weather predictions. And uh, for instance, if we see a large group of sunspots in a geoeffective solar longitude, uh, we know that there is a risk. Could it actually, you know, end our modern civilization? Like, could it completely wipe out the grid? Um, is it is it is the sun capable of kind of that level of uh, disruption? If just a similar event like in 19th century would happen now, it would really be a total disaster. <laughs> and currently, we don't have means to really protect against it. And if you are speaking about protection, um, so, uh, in general, so one one of the way is to switch sensitive equipment. Uh, off to avoid disruptions. Mm -hmm. Also cancel any maneuvers, launches, uh, polar flights. If we detect a very powerful coronal mass ejection uh, at the sun, uh, we can already make some predictions that within a couple of days, even less than a day, if it's a very strong event, something could happen. So we have one day to take some measures. So, you know, it, it sounds like in order to um, really save ourselves from a civilization ending kind of event here. We have to have this kind of multi-pronged approach that uh, takes into the forecasting when it comes to the solar cycle and also takes in all of these different um, uh, ways to protect infrastructure on Earth and in space. Like there needs to be a very multifaceted approach to making sure these storms don't affect us in a big way. And I, I also just wanted to talk a little bit about how you got into this field. You know. Um, where, where did you grow up and how did you first get it interested in science? So I was uh, grown up in Soviet Union. In uh, my childhood, I was very inspired by one of the greatest missions in the history of uh, space exploration. In the uh, 70s, there were two Voyager spacecraft mm -hmm. uh, launched uh, to study the outer solar system. And in case of uh, emitting um, any intelligent extraterrestrial life, uh, both satellites carry a golden record with uh, greetings, uh, the music of uh, Bach, Beethoven, Chuck Berry, Stravinsky, images of Earth, Sun, people, DNA structure and so on. And this is one of the greatest missions in human history, in my opinion. And uh, this is a demonstration really of some strength and courage of the human mind. Uh, satellites have been surfing the ocean of space already for over 40 years and uh, are still transmitted data to Earth. And I think uh, I'm just also curious and curiosity uh, will drive people forward. Um, and in our research, we uh, should not uh, forget about beauty. And I'm from my childhood, I'm very fascinated and inspired by the beauty of our object of study, the sun. So we've been very lucky in the last couple of years to have uh, next generation solar probes being launched, NASA's Parker Solar Probe, the European Space Agency's Solar Orbiter. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what those missions are going to be doing and what we'll learn from them? This data from two spacecraft should help uh, understand us how sun works, how it creates a heliosphere, a home for planets of our solar system and how we can better predict space weather events. It's so cool to think that we'll be going so close to the sun, closer than ever before, and then also having that uh, first polar view. It's the sun, right? It's a part of our life from the time we're born. It's such a big object in our life and there, there's so many mysteries about it. It's really interesting that it, despite it being the center of our solar system and the reason for life on Earth, it's uh, it's got all these secrets still. Yes, a lot of secrets are awaiting for us in the future to discover. Thank you so much for talking to us. I really, really appreciate uh, all of this. Like your passion is so evident for, for this subject. And um, yeah, it's just been, it's really lovely to hear. Thank you very much for inviting me and uh, whatever storms are raging, I wish you a good weather in space. <laughs>